Hi, boys and girls. How are you keeping on? I trust you're doing well. I am well. I really thank God for his goodness. It's a new day. We thank God for giving us a new day. Every day that he gives us is a day to worship him. It's a day to rejoice in him. It's a day to enjoy life that God has given us. And we really, really thank God because he's the one who gives us life. Today we are going to go through our Bible lesson from the book of Luke chapter 19. But just to remind you, we've been saying and we know that uh, the Bible is the word of God and the word of God is true because it is from a true God, from a pure God, from a holy God, from a God who does not change. So the word of God is true all the time and God does not change and the word of God does not change. And in the Bible, we have uh, two testaments. Can you name them? Old Testament and New Testament. How many books are in the Old Testament? How many are in the New Testament? Old Testament has 39 books and New Testament has 27 books. And uh, Luke, which we are going to go through, chapter 19, is one of the Gospels. We have four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are four Gospels. And we've been saying that the Gospels uh, talk about the life of Jesus Christ, that is from birth, the birth of Jesus Christ, the work of Jesus Christ, the death of Jesus Christ, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Basically, everything about the life of Jesus Christ. And we've been asking ourselves two questions. Who is Jesus Christ and why did Jesus come? And as we read through, and as we study through the word of God, we are getting to know more about Jesus Christ, who he is and why he came. And the main reason why Jesus came is to save us, to save me, to save you. And today we are going to look at one of the guys in the Bible who got this great salvation. And this lesson is very dear because it has reminded me where Jesus got me from. I was once not saved. I was once not born again, but one day I gave my life to Jesus Christ and I said, Jesus, come into my heart. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. And from that time, God has helped me by his Holy Spirit to walk according to his will. Of course, sometimes I, I find myself not doing things that are pleasant, that make God happy. But because the Holy Spirit is in me, he reminds me, Teacher Caroline, you're not going in the right direction. Please uh, do the right thing and it will make God happy. Then I do the right thing. I'm excited about it and God is excited about it. And the journey goes on and on and on. And I cannot wait to see what the journey entails ahead of me, just growing in my relationship with God. And I pray that it's the same case with you, that you're growing in your relationship with God. And if you're not saved, today is the day you can just surrender to Jesus and say, welcome Jesus in my heart. Today we are going to look at Luke chapter 19 about a man who made that decision to follow Jesus. And his name was Zacchaeus. One day, Jesus was going to a place called Jericho. And as usual, everybody um, had some word about Jesus and people were talking about him. Have you heard about this great teacher? Have you heard about this man who is doing miracles, who is healing diseases, who is casting out demons? So people in Jericho were really, really waiting for Jesus. And Zacchaeus was as well waiting for Jesus. And I bet one of the reasons why Zacchaeus was excited waiting for Jesus is because he had heard that Jesus interacts and dines and talks to tax collectors. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. In those days, most tax collectors were crooked people, wicked people, bad people, corrupt people. They used to take that which did not belong to them. That is, they used to steal from people. People did not like Zacchaeus at all. He was corrupt, wicked, and used to steal from people. But Zacchaeus really wanted to see Jesus. But he could not because he was very short. He was short, so he decided, what will I do so that I can see this man? He thought, 
um, an idea came to him and he ran ahead of uh, the crowd which was surrounding Jesus on, on the route that Jesus was using and climbed up a sycamore tree. And he stayed there waiting for Jesus to pass so that he could at least see him. When Jesus got there, definitely Jesus knew Zacchaeus was on top of the tree. How did Jesus know that Zacchaeus was on top of the tree? Because he's God. Jesus is all-knowing. He knows everything. He even knows what you're thinking about. He knows what I'm thinking about. He knows about our tomorrow. He knows everything. That is, he is all-knowing. So Jesus knew that Zacchaeus was on top of the tree. And Jesus, even before that, knew that Zacchaeus wanted really to see him. And he had come to Jericho for such people, people who were to receive him that day. Jesus looked up and looked at Zacchaeus and told him, Zacchaeus, come down. Today I am going to come to your house. Zacchaeus was excited. He came down and he welcomed Jesus in his house. So Zacchaeus um, received Jesus in his house and they had a good time. They ate together. Of course, people were very, you know, they were wondering, why is Jesus going to such kind of people? But Jesus came to save the lost. He came for all of us, and he wants everyone to know God. He wanted Zacchaeus to know God, and indeed, Zacchaeus got to receive Jesus Christ, and he got to believe in him, and he got to love him, and he told Jesus something amazing. He told Jesus, you know everything that I have stolen, I'm going to return it to the to the owners, but I'm not just going to return it like that. I'm even going to multiply it by four. So everything that I have stolen, if I have stolen maybe 1,000 shillings from a certain person, I'm going to return 1,000 times four, that is 4,000. If I have stolen 10,000 from a person, I will return 10,000 times four, that is 40,000. And Zacchaeus did exactly that. And Zacchaeus was a new man, and he started walking according to the will of God. And that is what Jesus does, boys and girls. He changes our hearts. When I was not saved, there are so many things I was struggling with, so many. Sometimes I will try to do the right thing, Thing because I had been brought up very well by my parents and I, had, uh, I was going to Sunday school and I was hearing the word of God. But because I didn't have Jesus in my heart, I was struggling in every way. But when I told Jesus, come into my heart, the Holy Spirit came in me and the Holy Spirit has been helping me, telling me, Caroline, don't go in that direction. Go in this direction. And I've become a better person and I pray that I will become better and better and better every day until Jesus comes for me to go to heaven. And that is the same case with Zacchaeus. He became a better person when he received Jesus because Jesus is the only one who can help us through the Holy Spirit to be more like him. And Jesus said that he's the only way, the only truth, and the only life. And that's the only way we can go to, to heaven by believing in Jesus. And that is what we will uh, go through in our memory verse, which comes from the book of John. So we are going to go to the book of John for our memory verse, uh, chapter 14, verse 6. Uh, let's say the memory verse together. It's on the screen. John, chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's say it again. John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We cannot go to heaven if we do not have Jesus in our hearts. And the only way we can have Jesus in our hearts is allow him to be our savior by allowing him to be our Lord and praying and asking him, Jesus, come into our hearts, come into my heart, help me to be the boy you want me to be, help me to be the girl you want me to be, and then the Holy Spirit comes in you and he helps you do the right thing. So when the Holy Spirit comes in you, when you're saved, you have to learn how to listen to him. And we listen to him through the word of God, through prayer. And when you hear the Holy Spirit tell you, that is a no goes on. That is not the right thing to do. Then what do you do? You obey. 
when you hear the holy spirit tell you this is the way to go then you go in that way when he tells you don't go in this direction then you don't go in that direction and in case you find yourself doing the wrong thing you just go back to god again and tell him god i am so sorry help me to be a better boy a better girl because i love you and you are my savior and we will live an excited life like Zacchaeus was excited after receiving Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray and I'm going to pray for you that the Lord will help you to walk according to his will. And if you're not born again, if you're not saved, just ask Jesus to come into your heart and then walk according to his will and he will help you every day. Shall we pray? Let's put our hands together and bow down. Dear God, we thank you. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for this day that you've given unto us and reminding us that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And we cannot go to heaven. We cannot see the Father without you. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to love you with all our hearts and to do your will. For any boy or girl who does not know you, I pray, Lord, that they will commit their lives to you and they will walk according to your will, O oh God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, boys and girls. May the Lord bless you and have a good week. Till next time, bye-bye.